Okay, first challenge. Um, in the title, I specify challenge me to 5-0 or 3-2. So let's take a random challenge. I, I would still play 5-3, but uh, random challenge. Ooh, playing Subham. I think Subham has signed up for the streamer battle tomorrow. Signed up for my team. Okay. I think it's been a while since we last played. <laughs> We've played 26 games total on Lee Chess. Good luck. Yeah, welcome to everyone trickling in. It's the first game of the stream. We have a Rusalimo. We have E6. I've definitely had this position before. Essentially expanding on the queen side. Eventually I'll complete king side development. A4. Yeah, I'm not sure if we're following any theory. Hey, it's Zactris. 28 months of chill. Thank you as always, Eric. Oh, thank you. Happy 28. Welcome back to Shazala. I see a request for King's Gambit. Maybe at some point. I gotta focus at the uh, or on the position at hand. So d4. You can play bishop e7. I can play c4. I think just bishop e7. I don't mind if we trade. I would lose a tempo with a bishop, but I don't think it's a huge deal. Now, I do have to be careful, because if I castle like next move, then queen d3 would hit this and this. Yeah, I have to be very careful. I could play queen b6, defending and creating the battery. Queen d5, bishop f2. I take on e1. I think it's okay. I gotta be really careful here, but I think it's okay. So at first it looks like I'm blundering the knight because the pawn's pinned, but after take and take, the queen's hit. White has no time to recapture the bishop. I mean, maybe it's a playable line, like queen g5 in that position, but not happening. Okay, so now I castle. And life goes on. I have knight f4. So knight f4, queen f1. It looks really close to being really good. Knight e4 is coming. So knight f4, queen f1. Maybe there's nothing. I mean, maybe I... I still play knight f4. Do I have to watch out for... No. Queen e4... Yeah, for a moment I was thinking here and here, but I have knight g6. So I think we're going to see queen f1. My plan is to play knight e7. Uh, unleashing this bishop. And then if knight e4... I think I just play knight g6. Allow takes, takes. And there's still pressure in the resulting position. This bishop is breathing fire from a distance. Thank you, Condor Halkin. With the first time prime. Yeah, I have to focus on the game more so than chat. After the game, I'll try and catch up with all the messages. We're both getting pretty low on time. 
So, yeah, I'm conceding the bishop here. If white wants to take the bishop. But at least my knights found some coordination. The queen can maybe swing over. I am threatening to take... Like, takes takes queen g5 is pretty lethal looking. And knight's kind of pinned to the g-pawn. We might see... Okay, we see bishop e4. It's logical. Take, take... Not really seeing anything super promising. I think I'll play this move. Allow the trade. It feels like the queen should be useful here. Like maybe queen g4 at, at some point. We could be trading a lot, like takes, 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 takes. My queen still defends this pawn from a distance. There's knight h3 ideas, but then king h1. Hmm. And this queen is completely stuck, actually. I'm controlling all the squares it can move to. Maybe I just make small improvements, like h6, give Luft. Wow. So do I have... I have a tactic here, there, and then, no, it doesn't work. Rook g5 may be coming. Oh, I'm losing a pawn, too. Unless I'm not. Oh, there's some weird stuff. Okay, let's play this. Some very weird stuff. So rook g5, I have knight h3 with a fork, because the pawn's overworked. If take, I can't do this immediately because I get back rank mated. So maybe I just play h5 and hope it works out. Maybe h6, preventing any shenanigans. Now I'm threatening this. Where is my... Where's my funny line? Let's start with this. It's gotta be good. And then not seeing anything though. Just trying to push for something. That's hard to play for white. Okay, now check, and then this. There we go. Yeah, queen takes, it's a fork mate. Okay. I guess I could have played this as also maybe a bit more forcing. Good game, though. Good fight. I wonder if white is, like, objectively fine here. There's a chance white could be better. Like white won a pawn, has two connected passers. But the prospect of rook here and just the pressure on the king side is pretty scary. And like these moves don't really work. So G pawns tied down to the knight, H pawn would just be taken. Knight E1 was played. Yeah, like what else to do? Maybe rook E5, like get the rook back to E1. Like here here and then here and then the idea would be takes takes and then there's only so much i can do with my knight and queen oh but engine says black's better is h6 the best move one of the best hello 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 hey it's Tagi. hello hello happy 52 welcome back 
Welcome back to everyone. So I got back to America less than a week ago. I'm still recovering from jet lag, but I'm on like a more reasonable schedule. And I'm not sure how long the stream will go, but hopefully we'll get a good handful of games. Um, sorry if I'm missing questions related to this game. I just want to do some quick analysis. So I was wondering about this, this, and then this. Take, take. How does this win? Wow. So the reason why Rookie 5 is not working for White is it's a very specific line. That's insane, actually. Look at this line. Rook A1. So pinning the queen, exploiting the fact the queen's tied down to defending g2. And when I was analyzing without an engine, I thought, okay, rook e1, and white's neutralizing. But after takes, takes, there's knight e2, forcing king h1, and in this position, black has only one winning move. And this, this is not a tactical idea I think I've ever seen before. Well, black to move and find the only winning move. Also, if you want to send me a challenge, link is in the chat. Um, we have the challenge command, which I should edit. But in the meantime, try and find the winning move for black. Yeah, look at this move. Queen c4, essentially trapping white's queen. Even though the queen's not attacked, the threat is knight g3. And it's very unfortunate placement of the knight and king for white. Because the king can't defend, and the knight blocks the queen from moving. Knight g3 is unstoppable. That's crazy. This this would be a good puzzle, because the only way to win for black is to find this, and then quack, quack. find the sequence. Quack, quack. Attack. Welcome back, Remy Royer. Have you tried using the Q bot? I have not, but Lichas has like an automatic Q. So I could go in order or I could use a random button. The, the random sub thing isn't working, but that's okay. Um, maybe I'll, I'll mix up the way I, I take challenges. So this game, oh, I almost played the perfect game. My one inaccuracy was rook a1, but still a winning move. Will there be skill-based matchmaking in tomorrow's streamer tournament? Yeah, so the way arena tournaments work, let me just use the battle command, bring up the tournament. Uh, tomorrow's tournament starts in 16 and a half hours from now. And it's two hours of blitz. And generally the way these tournaments work is you get automatically paired. And if you lose your first few games, you're gonna play other players who've also lost their games. So like after a few games, you'll be playing people around your level. And generally these tournaments attract like several hundred, usually maybe a couple thousand players between all the streamers getting their their cult followings to fight for them. What countries did you go on on your trip? So I went to, I started in Switzerland, flew into Zurich, uh, and then went to Biel, Switzerland for about two and a half weeks. Then I went to Germany. You. Missed you. And then I took a bus to Italy. The bus like traveled through Austria so I was thinking about adding Austria to my like countries list because I've never been to Austria, but I didn't get off the bus in Austria, so can't say that I've really experienced a country. But Italy was very nice. And then after Italy, I went back to Germany for a day and then flew back to the US. The whole trip was about a month. Thank you, Io Fafano. 
All right, random challenge. We have three plus two against goose chess. Play e4. If e5, I'll play a king's gambit. If e6, I'll play f4 anyway. <laughs> and I'll play... Um, I don't know what this is called, actually. Oh, well, here, um, this is going to be a, a Grand Prix attack. I mean, most French players play d5 on move two, so we're transposing to Sicilian. b6, interesting. I'm tempted to play d4 and transpose into an open Sicilian. I think what I'll do, I'll play d4, and after it takes, I'm not going to take back. I have a tricky idea. And this is a situation black really has to take. Black doesn't take, I'm going to get in d5. Although maybe black's considering playing d5 himself. Is a list of countries only ones you've been to for chess-related reasons? Um, no, there are countries I've just been to. So I'd say most of them were somewhat chess-related, but probably not all of them. Thank you, chess to whiz Another first-time Prime. Yeah, friendly reminder, if you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for free. No extra cost to you. You get ad free viewing, get emotes, get a badge next to your name. Sometimes you get to have a TTS message. Hey, it's two more primes. Connects and be pawned. Yeah, so Black's allowing D5, and now things are going to get pretty ugly for Black pretty quickly. I could play D6. I think I should play D6 kick the bishop back or if bishop here i'm gonna trap the bishop oh dear oh it's so much fun bishop Hello, f6 e5 you? I'm, fine, and you? I'm doing well and you look at this bishop f6 e5 connect five trapping the bishop ah i could still play e5 to like rub it in but might as well just take a bishop immediately. Yeah, pawn chains can be good at restricting bishops. Okay, now connect five would be a blunder. So bishop g2 looks natural. Thank you, sir. Rip off maple. Subbing for 29 months. Let's castle. Play connect five for the memes. Eventually. I'm in no rush. Had to follow some opening principles. And now e5 looks aesthetic. Have this move. Welcome to Christian James. Yeah, um... Link Glad is in the to chat to send the challenge. Stream. You can do XLAM challenge to trigger the link. And then you do need a Lee Chess account. I'm only taking challenges from registered players on Lee Chess, but it's free to make. Happy one year, also quack. Hey, happy 12 months, ordinary otter. Welcome back to Gary as well. Oh, happy three years to Gary. 36 months. Thank you, Christine HB, the 500 bits. All right, so I'm playing knight b5 for two reasons. For one, it's an outpost. Maybe someday I'll have a deeper outpost in black's territory. The other reason I'm enabling this move Which I'm realizing. What do I want to do? Black's threatening to take, take, and then take. 
If I play this, there's still takes. So I think I'll just play this. Just being solid. Thank you, Friday Hungry. For the 33 months. Oh, I got a Rosen Trophy for this game. For the Connect 5. Yeah, welcome back to Trevlar, the creator of Rosen Score. Okay, so if I play C4, the knight can come back. So I think I'll just play C3 and enjoy the position. It's, it's hard to figure out what to do here as black. I guess black does have a plan. Let's put the queen on d4. Ooh. Interesting structure now. All right, I'm up two knights. Oh, these pawns. Look at these pawns compared to these pawns. It's like comparing a toothpick to a skyscraper. But, Hi, okay, how to finish things off? content. Any plans for the rest of the year? That's actually a good question. Um, I'm still trying to figure out my plans for this position. Like, how to achieve checkmates. Probably this move. Target the F-pawn. Okay, make sure the pawn doesn't get too dangerous. Do I sack a knight? Uh, let's play this first. Okay. No mercy. Good game, Goose Chess. Yeah, this is a <laughs> this is a pawn structure I've never had before, but it was it was satisfying to experience. Oh, good game. Um I assume I just played the goose says in Twitch chat. Yeah, the, one of the main takeaways is when you play like um a Sicilian, even though the start is a French Whenever white plays d4, you should almost always like automatically take it. As d5 led to good things for white. I was gonna say that um like this opening is interesting after d5, e5. I know Hikaru played this against Yasser Sarawan in some US championship like years ago. Yeah, a few Hikaru games here. What was the trap? Was there a trap? Oh, I mentioned that if takes, I wasn't going to take what back. Do like to do when I was going to play this city. move. I can answer that in just a moment. Um, but this idea would have been cool. And there's some traps associated with this move. Like if black tries to be overly greedy, I guess I could just take the pawn. But there's also ideas of like c3 and eventually knight d6. So it's just a way to try and confuse the opponent. Okay, let's start a new game. Let's answer the question. Random challenge. Playing Sage Juice. 
So the question was, what do you like to do in exploring a new city? Um, which I I did a lot of recently. <laughs> I was in a lot of like new cities across Switzerland, Germany, and Italy. One of the main things is just take a long walk, like find a park to go to. There are some nice parks in Germany. But then if it's a city, also like explore the like the major landmarks. The first day I arrived in Munich, I've actually just asked ChatGPT to like tell me what to do. And it told me to walk to like the main, I forget what you call it, like the main center. And then there were a lot of like cafes and restaurants. Okay, so we have a uh, Cavan opening. C5 is the start of the Ray Robson variation. And White has a few choices here. 95 looks questionable. It does attack the C4 pawn, but it abandons D4. I have to calculate. Like I could consider taking. Wow. If I take on D4, I guess bishop takes B4. We trade on D1, I take back. I'm already up a pawn. Yeah, let's take on D4. It looks greedy, but white has more things attacked. And now I'm up two pawns. Did I forget a question? Oh, plans for the rest of the year. Yeah, I'm still figuring things out. Still trying to figure out my next like over the board tournament. Because I am motivated to play more chess. It's just a question of when and where. But yeah, in terms of travel plans, I have no flights booked, nothing on my calendar. If anyone has any suggestions, I'm open to hearing. All right, so I'm up upon here. Play knight c6. Yeah, white has compensation though. a5 runs into knight b6. Knight c6. One common theme in the Catalan is this bishop is much stronger than this bishop. There's a question how I like, complete development on the queen side. A3 is logical. I play knight d5. Knight d5, e4. Try knight d5. So it looks like I'm losing a pawn, but if white takes it, I have bishop e6, and I think there's some issues for white there. And if takes, I take back with the d knight. And if e4, then it kind of blocks a bishop, and my knight can move somewhere. Hey, we got a new new viewer. Six inner in disguise. Says, first time watching Eric live. Welcome to the live show. Do you have any Yasser stories? Yasser has a lot of Yasser stories. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I see Yasser a decent amount. Very kind person. Okay, B6 is a move. Knight c2, e5. I think I play e5 here. Just gotta open up way for the bishop. Now, this is a playable move. Knight b6, rook b8. I think I'm okay there. But white definitely has pressure. I have to be very careful. If I play this, wait a minute, what's going on? Take, 
This should be six might lose a pawn. This should be six take, 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 take. Hmm. Rook b8. Well, it's not so clear. I might just have to go into this. Uh, maybe f6? Over defending? Looks ugly, but I think I'll try f6. I really gotta watch my time too because, uh, yeah, there's no increment. I'm really curious to analyze afterwards because I felt like I should have been I'm passing through St. Louis from England earlier. at the moment on my honeymoon. Oh. We're going to the Chess Hall of Fame tomorrow. Oh, nice. Anything else you suggest doing around that area? Um... So I will say that you've picked a, a very hot time to visit because tomorrow it's like, I think there's a high in the hundreds, maybe a high of 99, at least Fahrenheit. So anything you do should probably be indoor. Also, let me focus here. I'm going to try and address a, a question a bit later. Um, can I not defend? I don't think I can defend. A5. No, let's play this. I'm trying to defend, blocking the bishop. Just looks scary, though. I do have the STL command with um, some suggestions of things to do in the area. Oh man, I'm in trouble. There to there. Try this. Oh yeah, let me focus. So at least I defend the pawn and attack this pawn. We might see rook a2 or rook d2. So I make left for the king. And the plan is probably king g6 and bring the rook to f7. If we trade these rooks, then I'm in good shape. Okay, I should be in good shape now. It's still tricky. Mm, not seeing what to do. Okay, making an outside passer. Some progress. Okay. Okay. Good game to my opponent. Like, opponent, I think, coped well with the situation. Maybe 95 is like a, a very playable move. 
Um, and at some point it felt like I was worse. But then, yeah, by the time we got here, I, I think it's like very close to equal. But then there was this issue for white. Like the rook was stuck on a2 for most of the rest of the game. Because like the king, the king wants to come and chase this rook away, but then e3 would hang. Maybe white could have could have just waited here. Maybe a move like e4, like chase the king back and then wait. Yeah, my time was very questionable. <laughs> okay, maybe not the cleanest endgame. Oh, so white was winning in this position. Knight c8 was a blunder. Bishop, oh, bishop d5 check. Would have been devastating because, yeah, king h8, knight f7. I assume there's, yeah, there's uh, takes and... Yeah, white's winning a lot of pawns. Oh no, my knight shift. Oh yes, my knight shift. This knight didn't do too much shifting though. At least compared to this knight. Yeah, this was a wrong knight shift though. What do you think? is the most aesthetically beautiful chess game. Well, if you saw my previous game, that was pretty aesthetically beautiful. For anyone just joining, this final position was very aesthetic. Okay, let me quickly check the opening. Because, oh, it seems like at least the first several moves out of the opening were all like top engine moves. So ninety five. Ninety five is a novelty actually, according to the Masters database. Pretty rare on the Lee Chess database. So take, take, take. Oh, I could have taken on e five. Yeah, I don't think I even considered this. It seems wrong to give white the bishop pair. But I guess it's playable. These pawns survive. Yeah, I have a ton of footage from the chess tennis event. Um, I have to figure out the best way to turn it into a video. Because it's probably over eight hours of footage between my tennis matches and chess matches and then the hybrid match as well. But I'm hoping, I'm hoping to have something to share soon. I could just like have one super long video, but a highlights video might be better. Overlay the chess game on top of the tennis footage. Well, the thing was, it was, um, it started with just tennis and then just chess and then uh, the semifinals and finals were like a hybrid format, similar to chess boxing. So it might be cool to like share the footage and do some voiceover commentary. Play a game, bro. I came here for chess, lol. Okay. Your wish is my command. Playing Joe Rosen. Okay. Good luck to my opponent. Uh, this is casual blitz. I'll play e4. Do. Remind me later. Okay, King's Gambit time. Remind me later. Don't know why all these windows are popping up. Okay, so this is a line that I don't know too much about, but I know the main idea. So white gives away a pawn, and gives away casting rights. At first, it looks really bad, but the point is knight of three is coming, and it comes with tempo, and white can get a lot of initiative very quickly, hopefully. I think e5 here. 
The Otagi approves of the King's Gambit. Ooh, there's this move, though. Wow. Some, like, weird tactical motifs that I'm not used to seeing. Can I... Can I easily stop that? I have King G1. King G1, Bishop Z5. Play King E2 as well. King E2 might be the way to go. It seems so wrong, but... I can't allow Knight G3. This way I defend the Rook. And I want to play d3 next. c6, okay, d3. And d5 might be coming. So what happens if I take? Assume takes. Crazy position. I could also consider taking there. I assume the knight would take back. I'm not thrilled with any any of the choices. What about take, take, and then g3? And there's g5. Bishop b3, knight c5. I don't know what to do here. I think I'll take. I'll play this position. So g3, g5, h4. That doesn't look good. Maybe h4 first. No, bishop g4. I have to do something though. Queen d4. It feels wrong. I'm maybe preparing this move. Threatening maiden one. Yeah, bishop c5 is coming. b4. What about this move? Feels desperate. I feel like this is an opening gone terribly wrong. Oh dear, bishop e3. And what if I take, 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 take there? Doesn't look great. So maybe just queen c3. Okay, that's a surprise. I was expecting g5. So I have b4. I can play a3. b4. Very confusing position. I'm doing well, just a little bit confused what's going on here. Thank you, a Feng Feng. I, I guess I keep pushing. Really not sure what my plan is.
Go for 93. I just hung a pawn. Forgot the knight was serving a purpose. And queen e4, king f2, maybe it's okay. It's probably not okay. Uh, looks scary. If I take, knight takes. Maybe I go for this. So it takes, okay, I'll go for this. So I'm down a pawn. So my idea not a five. Wow. Well. Going for broke. Allowing bishop c3. So I have 23 seconds left. And this move is kind of hard to stop. Okay. Oh, that was close. That was really close. I probably should have flagged opponent allowed checkmate. Yeah, I think the final position is losing for white. Knight d3 would have been really strong. Then the rook can't really get in. Like knight d3. My plan with c3 was to play rook b1, but then like b4 is coming. Okay. Yeah, black played the opening well. I wonder, was this preparation? Knight of three, queen h6. There's not too many games in the Masters database. Queen h5 is a bit more popular. And e5 was a mistake because of this. Oh. I, I assumed because of this idea, but maybe not. Oh, wow, d5 here. Yeah, d5 is a thematic move. Yeah, king e2 is not good. So the engine says I should play knight c3 and allow this. And then, in hindsight, like it kind of makes sense. I give up the exchange, but my king gets safe, and I'll get the center. And then from this position, it was just not pleasant. Minus six. But somehow, yeah, the game kept going and going. And then... 
Yeah, once I got an E6, it was tricky for black. But I was not better. The only point I was truly better in this game was the very final move. Does he turn off chat during games? Chat still exists during games, but usually when I play, I don't really look at chat. Especially during like intense games like this. So there's a lot to catch up on. Yeah, the more common line in King's Gambit is meta f3 in this position. Bishop c4 is like a more, what's the term, romantic line? Like it was played in the, what, 1800s? It's a cool idea. But yeah, Black handled it well. Okay, new game. Yeah, the, the Immortal game by Anderson features that uh, Bishop C4 line. So we have a new opening from King's Gambit to Queen's Gambit. This will maybe be a bit more solid for both sides. Bishop G5. Uh, yeah, I'll play C6. Hey, it's obese freeze. Happy 35. Okay, so we have Queen's Gambit declined, exchange variation. 9 3 is already committed. And Bishop F5 is probably the principled move. I'm wondering here if queen a5 makes sense. Queen a5, there's knight d2, though. All right, let's play bishop d6. Like, usually white's knight is already committed to c3. So I'd really like to exploit the move order here. Queen a5, queen a5, knight d2, maybe I do go for this. Let's try it. So the point is, if knight c3, I have knight e4, and it's kind of Cambridge Springs-like. I'm also unpinning the knight, so hopefully there's ways to like keep applying pressure. So knight e4. There's some cases where I just want to take and get the bishop pair. So probably expecting bishop h4 here. And then there's a nice idea to play, it doesn't say play knight a6, but not here. Let's just take, or do I take here? Or do I take nothing and just castle? There's a cool idea I'm trying to make work. So here, here, here. Don't think it works though. All right, let's take h6. So white's fully developed with the minor pieces. I'm a bit underdeveloped. 
on the plus side, I have the bishop pair, which is good long term. And I think the plan... Okay, white wants to play b4, which makes sense. I can't really stop it. So the plan is to reconfigure. Like ideally, I want the queen on e7 and then prepare knight e4. Hmm. Knight f5 may be coming. Yeah, queen d8 looks like a concession, but I just want to reroute. So, staying solid. Thank you, best prince. I play g6 and bishop. G7. There's some. Maybe queen f6? Let's see. Let's start with this. I'm realizing there is. Oh, never mind. Yeah, bishop g7. Wow. H5. Play this move. Thank you, P seven O six. I think now now G five. I could also take, but mm. Let's play this. So there is increment in this game. I basically have to live on the increment. Okay, here I win a pawn. Thank you, she Hello. Romero. I'm finally able to be back after finishing my thesis. Good to catch oh, nice. up to you again. Good job for finishing your thesis. Uh, fours may be coming. I have this move. I didn't really calculate this fully. But after takes, 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 I think f6 wins a piece. I'm hitting the knight as well, the bishop. With this, I have to play this. Okay, now the knight defends the pawn. F4 might be played. A scary position. E4 is probably coming. E4, I'll play rook d8. Okay, here I win the pawn. Defend this. Trying to consolidate. Maybe I just trade queens at some point. Okay. That made life easier. Oh, good move. 
Don't hurt me. Oh dear, my king found a bad place. Okay. Oh, that wasn't easy. Even, man, I was scared of, like, I was very close to losing. Like, in this position, if I don't have rook b3, then this move is coming. But rook b3, thankfully, threatens checkmate. But even here, there's rookie six. Rookie six, king g7. Uh, so if rook f8, I can take and it's okay. But I might be, I might be losing here. King h5. It's still okay. I have to play rook f3. Scary position. Yeah, it's completely winning, but then white was super resourceful. E4 was a good move. And then... Ah, uh, here I should have found this. Wait, what? Is it bugging? Are people seeing this? Like, what's happening? The, board, the pieces aren't moving. Is the stream still alive? Like, this is so weird. We see the the notations. Refresh. There we go. That's strange. Okay, now it's working. <laughs> Never seen that bug before. And a lot of a uh, lot of mistakes and blunders, and accuracies. I was never actually losing though. I was a little bit worse after G5. Okay, good game. White fought well, like even after losing the pawn. It seemed like I should have been winning and then it got tricky. So moving on. Thank you, Britster. The first time prime. Um, let's play Matteo, was one of the first people to challenge, 3 plus 2. Matteo's, Matteo's, Matteo S. Um, I think I'll play a, at least try and go for a Stafford, because why not? Okay, so Bishop's E4. I'm always conflicted what to do against this move because I could transpose into two knights. I could take. I'll take. It's objectively the best move. Now I could. Let's play knight c6. This is a center fork trick, basically. A taking is probably objectively the best, but uh, castling is interesting. Let's go back. And if I took, then it would be like a reverse Stafford Gambit. And maybe white has some compensation here. D4. So D5. Up a pawn. I don't think I've analyzed this position before. Wait, stream is food, said Syncopede. Probably meant stream is good.
Why didn't he take the knight? Oh yeah, if he takes the knight earlier, I can explain after the game. I would have had a fork in the center. Hey, welcome back to Andrew. Happy 18 months. Yeah, if you're just joining, doing some viewer challenges, keep, keeping it chill. There's a, a high demand for challenges, so best approach is to be patient and also be lucky doing a lot of random challenges. I think I'll play c5 here. It's a nice way to expand. c3 makes a lot of sense. So let's develop the bishop. I don't have a Sicilian course, but I do enjoy playing Sicilian. And Sicilian is one of my main weapons for black in like tournament play. It's my uh, alternative to the Stafford <laughs> against e4. So I want to do this. There's ways to apply pressure here. Oh, Andrew says, say 18 for a free sub. Few people saying 18. Oh, celebrating 18 months. Okay, let's defend. Maybe this move is slightly more accurate. A lot of people saying 18. Oh, there is one. Free Subway. I was very close to having Subway in Switzerland, but um, I held off. There were more interesting restaurants to choose from. Have you used the Ocali Sicilian? Very rarely. It's not an opening I really got into, but it does have some venom to it. Man, a lot of gifting here. <laughs> Thank you, Andrew. All right, so I'm, ooh. Oh, wow. Am I just losing? That's such a strong move. I mean, I'm much worse here now. If I take, take, I have no good way to defend this pawn, like, G6, I lose the bishop. I think my best try is rook e4, which is so sad. Because rook e6 takes and I lose this rook. I have bishop e5, maybe? Bishop e5 might be a move. Taking a fate. Yeah, it depends how crazy I want to be. I think I'd rather play rookie four. I'm in trouble. And there's, <laughs> there's increments, so my chances of dirty flagging aren't too high. Also, thanks again to Andrew. Thank you so many times. I think I've lost count. Oh, wow. So this is still coming. I still can't play G6, but I have this move now, so maybe it's not so bad. Wait. Any other move? Yeah, it was very clever from White to not capture the exchange.
try this. So I'll, I'm going to, at the very least, be down a pawn and be in shambles on the king's side, but at least I'm not getting mated immediately. Yeah, it's just not comfortable. I have this move now. So I think the worst is over. So Bishop G7 is coming. Queen H8 is prevented. Do I have any back rank ideas? Oh no, my pawn. Okay, not happening. I gotta move faster. Yeah, white is so solid now. I try and apply pressure. Okay, this is something. How to do it. Should I play rook b1? I'm doing things. I'm doing the ultimate thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, these positions can be tricky. White had, um, had a way to survive there. Queen e2 as well. Man, everyone who said 18 is getting uh, getting rewarded. Thanks again, Andrew. Oh, we can see the count based on the sub, uh, sub gifting leaderboard. <laughs> I think that's number 17. Okay, that was a close one. A few games this stream have, have been very dangerous for me. When you gave up the rook, could you have run away with the king? Oh, instead of giving away the rook. So. Wait. Did I have. Oh, I could have played king f8. I was blind to. I, I think I just, like, assumed that it makes no difference if I play king f8. But it does make a difference, because once the queen takes, then I have g6, and this is not losing the bishop. I should have played king f8, and this would have actually been, like, playable. I mean, white's maybe still slightly for choice, but... Oh, there's bishop takes g6. Yeah, maybe it's... It's still scary. Wow, the engine says g5. I don't think I would have found this. I should have found king f8, but... Maybe in a classical game, if I have like five minutes to think, I could maybe find this. Because, <laughs> yeah, we have to defend, and g6 just runs into this, so... g5, the way to go. And if this... How is this equal? I guess it's equal because there's counterplay. It's hard for white to defend this pawn. Rook b1? Oh, rook b1, rook e2. Wow. Where is Walter? Wait, where is Walter or where is Waldo? Oh, Andrew gifting to Nightbot. <laughs> Also, thank you, Curious. Happy 37. Yeah, kudos to my opponent. Also, I should explain the opening, because knight c6 is a weird-looking move. And there is a question, what happens if they just take my knight? Uh, the point here is d5, and I win back the piece. This position is more commonly reached from uh, a four knights with bishop c4. And this is considered dubious because of this move. And this is called the center fork trick. So 
Yeah, the casting is uh it's a tricky move. I play knight f6. Wow, knight g5 here. What if d5? Wow. I've never analyzed this before. It's crazy though that it's, like it's already winning for white. So rook e1. So white sacks. White's down two minor pieces here, but is winning back the knight and subsequently getting a winning position because the king is. The king goes here, bishop a6 comes. King e8, queen f3. Oh, and this is a threat too. Wow. Okay, learning some some opening ideas from this game. Oh, Mateo's in chat saying, I wanted to play the white version of the Stafford. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's scary to accept. I was considering it though. This is a Stafford up a tempo. And the only good move is F6, as far as I know. Or only move to fight for an edge. Oh, hello to Oliver. How many people named Oliver are watching? Oh, it's a four-year-old Oliver. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I used to be four years old. That was... Uh, that was about 20, 25 years ago, soon to be 26 years ago. It's a good age. Enjoy it while it lasts. Yeah, when I was four, I did not know how to play chess. But I knew how to play Pokemon. I was like really into Pokemon for a brief period of time around that age. I'm pretty sure when I was four, I have like a vague memory of like watching. We were watching TV at my preschool. It was a year that Michael Jordan retired. I was either four or five, but it was still memorable. I don't think I have any of my old Pokemon cards. At some point they got lost. Hey, thanks for the raid. Poco something something. Yeah, I think this is a, a Polish chess streamer. Shout out to Poco. Poco Chazashi. I hope I spelled that correctly. If you're just joining, I'm doing viewer challenges. I'll take another random challenge. Playing the casual player. Oh, the Pokemon World Championships were last weekend. Oh, wow. I never got into Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, okay, let's play D5. Have a Queen's Pawn opening. And we'll have a Queen's Gambit. Okay, so I'm going to play the Barman variation, which is Knight BD7. And G3 is a move, so I'll take. A4. I wonder how prepared my opponent is. I played this line in, uh, in Vegas against a strong Grandmaster. E4 is a main line. Queen C2. I think I can still play E5. Let's go for it. I am officially out of book. Queen C7 or Queen A5. Play Queen A5. So the idea is after white takes... I would have knight g4. In this case, I think I'd take here. I 
queen has to find a new home. I could play rook e8. Also considering queen h5. Queen h5, bishop f3. Let's go for this. So one idea is to put the queen here and try and trade queens. Okay, let's play this. Having some freedom for my pieces. Oh, Andrew says my five-year-old knows the board setup and the first two moves of the London. Let's go. Oh, sorry that um sorry for the message being deleted. Um, but Andrew recommending a good a good website. Uh if there's anyone watching who has young kids, chesskid.com is an amazing resource. It has like a whole curriculum. It's all kid friendly, a lot of video lessons. It unfortunately did not exist when I was a kid. Okay, I have this move. Let's play this move first. Wow, okay, so white sacking. And now what to do? Rook d8. Rook pinning. I wonder, does Eric see chess in his sleep? Occasionally I do dream about chess. When you play so much, it kind of becomes ingrained in your mind. So life is pretty good here. I won material, but still takes work. Still have to complete development. Hmm. I don't know what I want to do with the knight. I could play this. I was thinking takes in here and then here. Let's do it. I'm giving away the bishop pair, but I'm weakening white structure. I'm trading a bit. Mm hmm. Yeah, I want to play bishop e6, but then knight c5. So let's play this. I'm threatening this now. If I get in this move, it's winning a piece. Or is it? Maybe it's not. Because there's knight d4, but... Still applying pressure. I could play this. Maybe this. C5 and F3. The time is getting low. I just want to trade bishops. Opponent's not cooperating. I have this move now. Play this move first. I play a6 to prevent knight b5. I can take... Check. Hmm. 
I probably should have taken first. Time's still very low. Double up. Yeah, I think everything's crumbling now for white. King F8. Okay. Took some work. I got really low on time. But, uh, yeah, I think the opening was pleasant. This, um, this is a typical type of structure for the Catalan. And it's not the most theoretical line. Because usually the knight's not on c3. And the main idea I knew was e5, which I don't know if... Maybe I played it too soon. But engine does not like e5. Here, here. Ah, uh, because e6 is... Yeah, maybe unpleasant. So engine just says a5... Yeah, a5 is probably a useful move. Like, ideas of getting the knight here. Eventually knight b6. I had a dream I was supposed to play Obama in chess, but I couldn't see any of the pieces on the board, and no one believed me. Doesn't sound like the most pleasant dream, but maybe not quite a nightmare. Thanks, Obama. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Play a few more. Is there a from position challenge? Maybe I was hallucinating. Uh, no correspondence. All right, another random challenge. Playing LW167. Good luck to my opponent. Okay, um, I'm playing a different opening than the King's Gambit. I'll play Ponziani, why not? Haven't played a Ponziani in a while. I've streamed the last few days, and I don't think I've had a Ponziani the last few days. So this is already really pleasant, like getting the two center pawns. Uh, I'll play this move because there's a small trap to it that a lot of people fall into because now I'm winning with bishop. Yeah, black should have taken first. So no mercy here. Can go pawn grabbing. Hitting the rook. Black is running to take this pawn. So, and there's this, but let's just defend. A simple chess. I want to play bishop g5. Yeah, it's really been a downward spiral for black, like since early in the opening. Gonna keep the pressure. Oh, there's a funny line. So bishop c8 I can take. Oh no, my queen. But oh no, my opponent's queen.
Ooh. Okay, where's my castle mate? Hmm. Not quite seeing it. King B4, please. I'm just chasing the king back. Okay. No castling this game for me. So very soon I'll have some mating net. A knight wants to come here. Alternatively, the knight wants to come here and rook wants to come here. Had a funny position in Staffer that you're not sure I've seen. D3, bishop e5, knight c3, knight g4, bishop e3, take, 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 bishop e2. I don't think I've seen that one before. Because most people play queen f3. So bishop e2. My mind is more involved in uh, this position that was shared in chat rather than the current position. <laughs> Let's pre-move this. Bishop e2. Bishop e2. Should be very good. I guess something like queen h4 and queen f6. But maybe there's something stronger. Okay, I'm taking a quick uh, detour. So this comment was from Ramo saying, uh, or sharing this opening. Yeah, okay. So Saffir Gambit, a common trap of this. This, this, take, take, take. And then bishop e2. And apparently it's black to move. Yeah, my first thought is queen h4. And this just looks really bad for white because casting is not coming and the queen's stuck. Queen d4 is also possible. Queen f6 is attractive, but walks into bishop f3. So I like the idea of starting with this and then thread this. And then if this, there's like maybe this move. And then like this, this. Oh, bishop h3. That's a funny move. But bishop h3, there's this. Oh, wow, and then bishop h2, or bishop g2. Does this work? It's actually really beautiful if it works. Wow. Is bishop h3 the best move? Wow. Never seen that one before. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> it reminds me of the London trap where you play, you like randomly play bishop a6. So it's like a a parallel universe in the Stafford. Bishop h3, man. So the point is we're attacking g2, and white, if white takes, then it's made into queen f2 coming. Hi there, Eric. Hello, chat. Hello. Heart. Booty Snatcher. Subbing for 44 months. I don't remember that name. How have you subbed for 44 months, and I don't remember your name? I don't think I've ever said that name before. Did you change your name? I would have remembered that name. Did Tagi rename himself? And Tagi would not have renamed himself.
Well, thanks for subbing for 44 months. <laughs> yeah, since 2019, man. Welcome back to Killager. Maybe I'll get to 44 months one day. Embarrassed smiley face. Hey, you're only 40 months away. Oh, Tagi says, LOL, I'm still Tagi. Okay. Oh, your old name was Oh No My King. Okay. That makes me feel better that I'm not suffering from amnesia. Welcome back, J. Smith Vestal. I Thanks remember that name. All the content, Eric. Sometimes it does take like a few months of subbing before I like remember the names. I am generally like bad at remembering names because I I spend like most of my efforts committing openings to memory that uh there's not enough room for the names. But I remember Pac Shipman too. Happy thirty. In Rose and Angry Goose. And the penguin monkey. I see the comment from Molecular Man. It says, huge fan, just wanted to ask, have you played Gotham Chess? How do you guys stand? Yeah, normally... Um... Do you remember me? Oh, welcome back, Spumoni Ice Cream too. Yeah, normally the way we stand is we, like, just lift ourselves from sitting and then uh, become slightly taller. But in terms of my record against Gotham Chess, yeah, we've played like so many times. I think we probably have a pretty close to even score, but we go way back. We've played twice in like Vida classical tournaments. And the two games we played over the board we've we've drawn. Hey, thank you, Bobby Briggs. I remember that name too. Gifting five. I could check. Levy probably has a better score than me on chess.com. And Levy is like super dangerous in Blitz and Bullet. Gotham Chess. Let's see. To log in. So 70, 16, 69. Or um, 89. <laughs> Yeah, so we've played over 150 games. Approaching 200. You versus Gotham is always amazing. Yeah, many of our matches have been on YouTube. You can search for the, the I'm Not a GM Speed Chess Championship. What's my score against Tagi? Tagi. I think I've played Tagi slightly fewer times. Oh, wow. Only a one game against Tagi. We did do that match with like blindfold queen odds way back when. Gypsy says, where have you been? You've seemed gone for a while. Uh, I explained that in my most recent YouTube video. Shortly before starting the stream, I posted a, a video called Channel Update. This is the most recent video. And I, I talk about where I've been and why I didn't post for two weeks. But also in this video, I request for, basically ask people for input into what type of content you'd like to see. I have so much footage from like all over Europe and um, I'm back home now. So I have time to finally like go through and edit and post stuff. 
I want to see more jokes. I feel like you never make jokes. Okay, I'll keep that in mind for the future. Have to study some comedy. Goodbye to Ramo. Oh, DR content. There is a tournament earlier this year in the Dominican Republic that I didn't like know about until Hello, Eric Rosen, it was already happening. CEO of chess. But it was a qualifier for the World Cup, which I probably would have played in if I like knew sooner. Hopefully in like hopefully next year or this coming year. Welcome back to Airberry. Okay. If you're watching the stream and your name on Lee Chess is Devi Foss and you're a pirate, white moves first. Okay, good luck. Let's play Sicilian. Uh, C4 is... C4 is generally very committal. But can I punish it? E5 is probably the principled move. Let's play E6. Allowing D4 and after takes, takes. So white's trying to get a Marazzi bind set up. But if knight c3, I can play bishop to b4. This might be some theory. Oh, good night to Andrew. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the gifting subs. Happy 18 months again. All right, so... Yeah, I think I want to prevent white from playing e5. If e5 instead of queen d3, I had then e4. But uh, yeah, I have to be precise. d6. Now, it probably makes sense to put the bishop on this diagonal, because I don't really want to take anymore. And White's choosing between this and this. I mean, if bishop e3... Now, I have some choices. I could play queen b6. I could take... I kind of like the idea of taking and then queen b6, although there's c5. All right, let's play queen b6. Mm. You can just rook d8. I was thinking about queen d4, but I don't think there's any reason to force matters. Bishop e6. I'm dreaming of a situation where my knight's here, my rook's here, my bishop's somewhere else, and I play d5, and we trade, and I play knight g3, rook h6 checkmate. It's a very far off universe, but I think I'll start with this, because why not? Queen a7. Oh, rook a6 was actually just a bad move. But white, white's already scared. <laughs> okay, let's play knight h5. 
So knight f4 or knight g3 is coming. Maybe queen f2 as well. Like king h2, queen f2. Yeah, this bishop is not the happiest of bishops. If king h2, queen f2, I'll be threatening bishop takes h3. Some monster attack. Mm. Still not simple, though. There, there. And there's not a four. Yeah, my rook has no purpose on a6. The only purpose was to achieve my fantasy idea, which is not a reality. Okay, so now knight g3 king here. I am calculating knight g3 here and then here and takes and then queen g1. There's no way that's good though. Maybe just f6. F6 follows the principle where I have a bishop uh, on a light square, so I want my pawns on dark squares. White's not really following the, the same principle. <laughs> Bishop d3. Yeah, let's play g5. Okay, now I have queen f2. Not sure if it achieves much, though. I mean, what am I threatening? Maybe threatening to take, but not after that. I think I'll... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I'll play very positionally. I'm going to take and then play c5. So I'm fixing this pawn on the light square. I do allow the prospect of this, but I'm essentially guaranteeing that this bishop will never find happiness. And then long term, there's going to be ideas of eventually a4, or if white plays a4, then I can double up on the b file. And I can kind of make use of both sides. Because there's potential to essentially create weaknesses on the king side and queen side, and then use the principle of two weaknesses. Now, do I want to trade knights? Like, one concern is that the position closes down. Yeah, let's play knight g7. Now, go for a4. Hey, it's Nate Brady. What's up, Nate Brady? Shout out to Nate. Hope you had a good stream. I think Nate was also doing viewer challenges. If you're just joining, we're having a positional strategy clinic in this game. Uh, I have a happy bishop. White has a sad bishop. But it still takes a lot of work, actually. I could play this. Maybe I should just take... 
And then, yeah, the knight wants to come most likely to d4. Allowing knight f5. If knight f5, I think I play this. Yeah, so now we have, or I have, good knight versus bad bishop. And there's a few weaknesses in white's, white's pawn structure. There's this idea, but no need to rush. Actually, there is some need to rush. No, it was, it was 5-0. <laughs> I thought it was, I thought there was increment. I was like, how did I flag? <laughs> Oops. Oh, I was really just chilling and enjoying life. My opponent was probably so confused why I was moving so slowly. I didn't even acknowledge the time control. <laughs> Good game. White resisted. Oh, I was going to really just milk the position. Eventually make a latte. Oh, good game to Oat Kid, if that's who I played. Oops. That was a fun game. I think it was pretty clean, too. Let's check the analysis. Oh, was I worse at some point? Okay, it was like roughly equal. Oh, it happens to Nate Brady too. Yeah. Oh, I was, yeah, Rook A6 was a really bad move. Because White can play Knight A4 and C5. And. Yeah, this would have been really unpleasant. I think I was good. Like, my original plan was this, but white has a battery and my rook's just trapped here. So I would have had to just be sad and cry. But that was my only blunder, at least. Yeah, and then one inaccuracy. Am I supposed to play d5? Ah. And if takes. If it takes, I lose a bishop, but I guess takes. Wow, castling. Oh, thank you, Nate. Gifting to Oak Kid. Okay, one more game. Random challenge. Playing Jackfruit Gambit. Uh, this is 5 0, so now, <laughs> now I'll be aware of the, the time situation. Um, uh, what opening do I want to play? Let's play a Spanish. A very rich opening. Not something... Ooh, a Shaman. Alright, let's play a super sharp line against a Shaman. Now, D4... A lot of players will play this without realizing what black can do. Seems like my opponent maybe isn't prepared for this. But there is a... There is a way for black to win material with the next move in this position. Yeah, because now if I move the bishop, there's queen a5 and I lose a pawn. But there's a crazy move, knight c3. Essentially sacrificing the bishop and then... It gets wild. Young children, close your eyes. 
At the very first time I encountered the shaman in a tournament, I stumbled into this position and I played bishop e2, I lost a pawn, and I just got crushed. So if you go into this position, like this is a line to go for. And I think objectively black is okay, but in blitz it's I think it's very tricky. What's it called? So Schliemann, I think, is spelled S-C-H-L-I-E-M-A-N-N. -N. It's like Neiman, like Hans Neiman, but replace the N with an S-C-H-L. So Bishop E7, Knight D6, let's just castle. I'm not sure what black is doing next. And one of the ways white has compensation here is the fact that the pawn's on e5 and restricts black's development. Like the knight can't easily develop, black can't really castle soon. Knight h6 walks into this. And like any d pawn move I'll take. So, okay, bishop b7 is the idea. If I play queen d5, there's this. So I'm calculating queen d5, rook b8, knight d6 takes, takes bishop b7, rook e1, king f8. And then, do I have anything? I could play rook e1 first. I could check first and move back. Starting with this, I like the alignment. Now there's this move. So take, take. Wait. Take, take. Looking for ideas. I think queen f3. Although maybe, yeah, maybe I should start with this and then queen f3. Because g6 just weakens the dark squares for the bishop. King f8, okay. Wasn't really anticipating that. But it's a move. Let's check. I think the problem for black is there's not really a good way to get out of check. So there's three legal moves here, and I think all of them just lose a piece. Obviously, like these two moves I take. And if king e8, I have knight d6 checking and hitting the bishop. Okay, so in this case, I take. Maybe it's still playable for black. Take. There's queen a3. There's bishop g5. I like bishop g5. Playing in any big tournaments coming up. Love the content. Oh, thank you. Stay classy. Um, 
Yeah, I was saying earlier that I haven't really figured out my exact plans for the rest of the year. So I'm not sure when my next tournament will be. But hopefully I'll play something before the end of the year. And once I know, I'll, I'll share it. Yeah, after the game, I'll, I'll analyze and see all the things I've missed. But, yeah, I've won back the material. I'm not even down the pawn. And I think this position is going to be very difficult for Black to defend. Yeah, if rook c2, then I can, I can eventually cash in. Bishop takes. So queen takes, I have rook e7. And the fun begins. Yeah, rook g4 looks like lights out. So I'm threatening, I'm threatening maiden one. And the king is completely cut off, like in all directions. If queen f8, queen h5 is checkmate. If rook moves, then I take on h7. That does prolong things. I could start by checking. Now let's take. Okay. Just some cleanup. This time I'll I'll be aware of the fact that there's no increment. I'll move a bit quicker. Hey, it's it's Jude. Hey Jude. Thanks for the raid. Yeah, if you're just joining, it's cleanup time. I'm trying to orchestrate some pawn checkmates. Okay. Also, if you're just joining, I've been streaming for over two hours now. And I'm getting kind of tired. Uh, shout out to Jude. Hope you had a good stream. Um, yeah, I played a, a good handful of of instructive games this stream. Why not ninety six after Bishop B seven? Let's see. Oh, in this position. Yeah, I didn't see a clear, like anything clear after takes, takes, king, f8. I didn't want to trade if it wasn't necessary. And of course, it looks nice with the pawn here, but black can kind of develop now. And I wanted to keep the pawn on e5, restricting the knight. So, so what did I miss? Oh, rookie one was a blunder. Best move, bishop g5. Wow. It didn't come to mind. So what's the point? Takes 96. Ah, queen f3 wins the rook and king e7. 
Okay, F4 is kind of ridiculous. Very engine-like. But I guess there's other ways to get the job done. Queen H5 is nice. Yeah, Bishop G5. It's a hard move to consider. But then, yeah, then the position was very pleasant. Okay. I think I'm going to wrap things up. That was a fun stream. I hope people learned a thing or two. Um, I'll be back in about 14 hours? Maybe 14 and a half hours from now. The battle is taking place tomorrow. X-Slam battle. Yeah, 14, 14 hours and 38 minutes. Uh, got some players on our team. Norwegian champion, nice. What version of how to reassess your chest did you read? I forget exactly. One of the versions, maybe the fourth edition? Could have been the third. I will play tomorrow, yeah. Planning to stream the games, but the way this works is anyone can join for the team, and then the top 20 scores for each team counts towards the overall team score. Thank you, amazing, amazing named it. The first time prime. Let's send, oh, let's send a raid to someone who's starting soon. Good timing. Can I viewer challenge you to Minecraft PvP? I don't know how to play Minecraft. I don't know how to accept viewer challenges in Minecraft. Maybe someday in the future, though. Oh, hi to Shwarma. Also, good night, everyone. The raid is beginning. Send some love to Minlay, who hopefully is starting soon. As a starting soon screen. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be back in about 14 hours. It's time to sleep. And stay tuned for more chess. Adios. Oh, what time? Uh, it'll be just before 1 p.m. Central Time. So again, use the battle command and... If you want to, you can join the tournament fight for my team. See you guys then.